A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised that a trial by fire is occurring among you, as if something strange were happening to you, but rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. For it is time for the judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins with us, how will it end for those who fail to obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous one is barely saved, where will the godless and the sinner appear? As a result, those who suffer in accord with God's will hand their souls over to a faithful creator as they do good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace but the sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's enemies will be those of his household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. The reflections for this second day of our fortnight for freedom begin again with a, an excerpt from the Vatican II document on religious liberty. It is in accordance with their dignity as persons, that is, being endowed with reason and free will and therefore privileged to bear personal responsibility, that all men should be at once impelled by nature and also bound by moral obligation to seek the truth, especially religious truth. They are also bound to adhere to the truth once it is known and to order their whole lives in accord with the demands of truth. However. 
Men cannot discharge these obligations in a manner in keeping with their own nature unless they enjoy immunity from external coercion as well as psychological freedom. Therefore, the right to religious freedom has its foundation not in the subjective disposition of the person, but in his very nature. In consequence, the right to this immunity continues to exist even in those who do not live up to their obligation of seeking the truth and adhering to it. Nor is the exercise of this right to be impeded, provided that the just requirements of public order are observed. The reflection then for us continues. The Council Fathers note that it is precisely because human beings are endowed with reason and free will that they naturally seek what is true and good and also then have a moral obligation to search for the truth. This is especially the case of seeking religious truth. Moreover, the truth they believe they have come to know binds them to that truth. Even if the so-called truth that they believe is not actually true, yet because they believe it is true, they are bound to follow their conscience. As long as what they believe does not infringe on the just rights of others, they cannot be coerced into giving up or changing what they believe. Moreover, the Council states that in order for human beings to fulfill their obligation to seek the truth and live by it, they must be free to do so. No one or no authority is to force them to believe something to which they themselves have not freely given their consent. And so they ask, why does the Council stress the need to seek freely religious truth? Why do those who believe what is actually false still possess religious freedom? Good questions, good questions. In A Man for All Seasons, since it's Thomas Moore's feast day, there is a scene where Moore has resigned because the king has declared himself head of the church, and he's handed off the, the chain of office to the Duke of Norfolk, and those two get into a discussion. And the Duke says, well, the Pope's a prince, isn't he? Moore says, yes, yes bad enough. He says, but he's also the vicar of Christ. He says, you're going to throw away everything for a theory? And Moore says, the apostolic succession is not a... Well, wait, yes it is. It is a theory. You can't taste it. You can't touch it. It's a theory. But what matters to me is not so much whether it's true or not, but that I believe it. Or rather, not that I believe it, but that I believe it. And he says then, I trust I make myself obscure. <laughs> With Norfolk, that wasn't too hard. But Moore was touching on something fundamental there. It's the essence of religious freedom that when we examine and seek for the truth to the best of our ability, as honestly as possible, then we find what we find, whether it's factually, empirically, objectively true or not, insofar as we are convinced in honesty that it is, we have an obligation and conscience to follow it. And that is an obligation that can't be impeded, the Council says, by any external coercion. So that's what we celebrate as we celebrate this fortnight for freedom. Let us stand and pray.